Well, hello once again. Welcome to our third episode of Laws of Life Forum. My name is Sergio. I am your host. Let me introduce this amazing panel that we have with uh, us today. Starting to my left, we have Miss Jean. Tell um, us about yourself. Well, um, there's not much to tell about me except that I am just under the. Uh, let's just say I'm. Uh, I don't, first of all, like I said last time, I am just. I feel so blessed to be amongst these three oh. gentlemen because mm -hmm. they have so <laughs> much <laughs> knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, Tim. <laughs> they, that, that they really. I think I'm probably the, the, the least knowledgeable here because I learned so much from them, uh, and especially since I met my husband, Fred, Judge Mosley. Uh, anyway, I, am, uh, also, I also bring some uh, news uh, from the uh, different, different sources, but today I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that, but I know that I'm going to learn more in this session from these three gentlemen. So I, I might be doing more listening than talking. Oh, you know what they say, that the one who listens the most is the wisest, so. Jean's mm. trying to she, butter us up. Yeah. Yeah. I know. trying to butter us up. She's up to something good. She's up to something. <laughs> but you know what, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit, of, why don't you introduce your husband to us today? My husband, Judge Fred Mosley. Um, you can brag about him, it's okay. <laughs> I can't. I can't say everything I about him that I I know and feel. But he is uh, the the most humble man I know, and he's so knowledgeable. And I, I just, every time he speaks, I can hear him every day. And and the first time I really saw him speak, that's how he uh, mm. captured me. And said, because. We were at some big event, and I'm, you know, I'm walking in proud. He got up and spoke just on his feet because something was wrong with the lights, and he delivered a message. Hmm. I swept you I, off your feet, huh? It, it, it did. I just was like sitting there, like, what, what? And I'm just crying. <laughs> but he's. Was it I'm love blessed. at first sight? It was love at well, which site? Third, I, you know, I was, was, was kind of flirting, but he didn't know it, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, love. There's a love there. We're going to talk about the loves here in a moment, but I'm yeah. going to have to do this. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to give him a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. I'm going to remind Mrs. Mosley of a couple of laws of life based upon what she just said. Okay. <laughs> We're going right into the teaching guys. The law of exaltation and abasement. <laughs> And pride comes before <laughs> destruction and a heart of spirit <laughs> before a fall. And also, the law of words, by your words are you justified, and by your words are you condemned. <laughs> I'm not sure where this is going. I thought it was going good, but I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, well, you all were just saying, <laughs> you all, you've been on your honeymoon for many years now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow, we are getting out of control here, but we're keeping it real. Brother Tim, why don't you introduce yourself? My name. My name is Tim Shields, and I love to hit baseballs. Oh, wow. And I love to study the Word of God. Mm. Ordained minister, presiding president of the uh, Christian Media Association. We're so glad to have you guys on the show today. This is our third episode. Today, um, we're going to talk about, um, well, we'll actually do a, re a little pre uh, resume, not resume, review yeah. <laughs> of uh, a brief of touching on what we've covered so far if you've missed our first and second episode. So we're going to give you a little bit of an overlay of what we've covered so far. How does that sound? Well, yes, very briefly. This, as, as we've already pointed out, is a Laws of Life Forum. And what we're endeavoring to do through this forum is to make our viewing audience aware that there are laws of life. Not talking about the Mosaic, not talking about man's law, but there are laws of life established mm -hmm. by God mm -hmm. that are absolute. And we would define a law of life as being an absolute divine rule that governs the consequences of our actions. Yes, we as human beings, we have free will to a certain extent, but we don't determine the consequences of our actions. Our actions, are the, the, the consequences of our actions are determined by one or more laws of life. Now, in order to refer to a law of life as being such, 
we're required by the Spirit of God to begin in Genesis, laying having an Old Testament foundational scripture as well as a New Testament foundational scripture, carrying that law of life throughout the Old Testament into and throughout the New Testament, establishing each law of life as an absolute. Wow. There, there's approximately 50 laws of life that the Spirit of God has revealed to us, which we share, have been sharing for the last 25 plus years. But also, what makes what we're endeavoring to do different than what anybody else is endeavoring to do in this regard, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. is that we not only show how these laws of life are independent, but we show how they are interdependent mm -hmm. one to another. You hardly ever find one law of life operating by itself mm -hmm. because we're emphasizing the law of notice and warning in, in the forum. And we've defined notice and warning as being notice, that is being made aware of an event prior to its occurrence that provides opportunity or something positive. Warning being made aware of an event prior to its occurrence of something that presents danger, great bodily harm, or even death. But when we go through the scriptures, oftentimes we'll find notice and warning, but we'll also find the law of exaltation and abasement along with it. We'll find the law of sowing and reaping along with it. Many times we'll find the law of the gift working along with the law of notice and warning and many other mm -hmm. laws of life. Oh, wow. But that's mm -hmm. what sets what God has called us to do, separate and apart and distinct from what I'm aware of of any other teaching or any other such forum. Oh, wow. So today, by faith, we're going to be able to delve more deeply into the law of notice and warning with three scriptures that we rely upon. One that we mentioned in our last session, uh, Hosea 4, not Hosea 4, 6, but Deuteron Deuteronomy 29, 29, after Amos 3, 7. That's the one we mentioned in our last session. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to God. See, God has reserved some things to himself, to him. But those things that are revealed belong mm -hmm. to us and our children forever. Mm -hmm. God says, I want you to know. Mm -hmm. I don't want you caught by surprise. <coughs> I don't want you blindsided mm -hmm. because you belong to me. Let me digress a minute. Ooh, that's good. Uh, Hope you guys are taking notes, by the way. I am. <laughs> those of us who have children, can you imagine that you knew of something that was detrimental to one of your children? or grandchildren, mm -hmm. or anybody close to you. And you had knowledge of how serious this thing was, whether it was an opportunity under notice or a warning as it relates to something detrimental, that you would not warn or give that relative notice of the opportunity? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can't imagine so. Mm -hmm. Do we expect any less of an all-knowing, all mm -hmm. all-powerful God Mm. to not make us That's aware good. as yeah. his children. Mm. That's good. Another scripture, Matthew 10, 26. There's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Mm -hmm. It's going to come out. That's right. So these three scriptures along with many, many others come together to establish the law of notice and warning. And what we want to do, if I recall correctly, what we want to do today is to show the different ways that God gives us notices and warnings. Wow. Mm. So this is going to be a phenomenal show. I hope we can give you guys all the material that we want to give you today uh, in one segment that we have, uh, you know, only limited time, but we have a lot to share today. Uh, by the way, uh, Rever Reverend Mosley, he is also the presiding judge of Laws of Life TV program. He's an executive producer, director, author. He's written this amazing book, uh, Laws of Life. And uh, That's good. it's a great book. I've actually read it, mm -hmm. and there's a lot. And it's where we're getting a lot of the uh, subject material that we're actually teaching you today. So um, definitely uh, a must for, um, for everyone. And it also, um, you're actually uh, a speaker and, uh, and a judge. Yeah. So, former judge. Uh, former yeah. judge. So a lot of credentials there. And, uh, well, what about Mr. Tim Shields at the other end? We have another heavy hitter here, and he actually loves baseball, which I didn't know. So heavy hitter, yeah, it goes with well, I, I like hitting baseballs. So <laughs> going push-ups and staying healthy, so, you okay. know, it's good to stay at the top of your game physically. and uh, Not Rambo style or anything like no, that? No, no, not Rambo style, but, you know, it helps me to, to stay at the top of my game so I can live for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So... 
Brother Tim is the uh, current presiding uh, president of Christian Media Association, as I mentioned before, and he's also an ordained minister. Combined here, we have uh, so many years of uh, experience in, in uh, teaching, so we are going to dive right in and going into, of course, we talked about the laws of life and why are we talking about the laws of life? I think uh, Brother Mosley gave us a real good summary of a brief introduction of all of the material that we want to share. And we're going to dive into like how these laws are actually applicable today in our daily life and basically how God talks to us. As I love what you said that he, he talks to his children and, and, and it's kind of like a, and a father or a, a parent to their mm -hmm. kids that they don't want their, har uh, their kids to be harmed. Mm -hmm. So they give them warnings and how to um, make sure that they don't get in, in harm's way. And it's the, way, the same way with our Heavenly Father. He doesn't want us to walk with, um, you know, if there's an impending danger that He's going to give us warnings and signs. And that's the, 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 the love of a Father, the loving Father that we have, our Heavenly Father. And I love that. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more. So let's go ahead and are you guys ready? Um, you know, if there were seat belts here, I would fasten them, but we're just going to go with um, diving in. So go ahead, Brother Mosley. Well, the first way that God speaks to us, and clearly the primary way, mm -hmm. is by and through Scripture. Mm -hmm. God is not going to give us any revelation that comes from Him that we cannot attach Scripture to. It has to have its foundation in Scripture. Right. Now, anything that we may want to do that's not in God's will, uh, God is not going to give us a confirmation as it relates to that activity. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we have to have a scriptural confirmation of that. Yes. Now, now, there's so many accounts of scripture that deal with how God speaks to people. And I'm going to share one, and this is... Um, uh, after the scriptural uh, revelation aspect of it, which we, I think we all agree that we must have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the way God primarily speaks to me is through dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. And that's not a way that he oftentimes speaks to others, but mm -hmm. my mind, Tim, is so busy mm -hmm. during the day, God mm -hmm. has to wait until I'm asleep mm -hmm. in order to, to, to share that's notice good. and warning to me. Now, and we're, as we go along in this, uh, this series, we're going to pull out various Bible accounts, biblical accounts of God giving notice and warning. You know, we think in terms of, of, of Joseph and how God gave notice and warning to Joseph. He started out in dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what kind of dream that was, Tim? It was a, he was given in the dream a, a, a message that his family was going to bow down to him, mm -hmm. that he was going to be a person right, of authority. Sure. That's right. But that was a notice. A good thing. Mm -hmm. Now let's take it a step further. It was a notice given to him in a dream, but also look at some other laws of life that came into play. How that dream was going to come into fulfillment was also by another law of life, the law of the gift. Proverbs 18, 16. It was his gift. Mm -hmm. God had given him a dream that he was going to be exalted mm -hmm. under the law of exaltation and abasement. But also, it was going to be his gift. Remember, it was his gift when he was in jail with the baker and the butler, mm -hmm. and they had a dream that needed to be interpreted. It was Joseph's gift of being able to interpret dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, he has been given this notice of exaltation, but it takes to flip the, the, uh, the gift mm -hmm. in order to lift it to the level it needed to be. So he interprets the butler and the baker's dream, then what happens? It gets it before Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So we got the law of notice and warning, mm -hmm. we got the law of the gift, we got some confirmation that's involved there because along the way, God, Joseph was exalted everywhere he went, uh, Potiphar's house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then when he got in the jail, he was placed in charge, mm -hmm. then exalted in Pharaoh's house. So we have three or four laws of life in operation. But going back to what I shared about dreams, how this series was born was by and through a dream mm. that God gave. Okay. And the dream, Tim, was that there was a banner. It was, have you, have you seen the picture Rocky, the right. boxer? Yeah. It was the stairs like in the film of Rocky. Okay. Mm. And at the top of the stairs, there was a huge banner saying, teach 
all of the laws. Oh, that's good. Wow. And that was God's message to me that he had given me this series mm. as a notice. Now, this was 30 years ago. Mm. And there have been confirmations along the way, year after year after year. But I st oftentimes I have to take it back to Scripture mm -hmm. as to how God spoke to his people by through dreams and visions, through words of wisdom, words of knowledge, mm -hmm. through a prophetic word, and through many other ways I'm sure we'll talk about today, how God gives us notices and warnings. And so often people that think in terms of the warning side of this law of life, but there's another side, the notice side. The good side. The good side. <laughs> the notice side. And we don't want to miss the notices, yes, the right. opportunities. This is right here, mm -hmm. the four of us together. This is a confirmation of something that God is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There should be a witness, and I'm sure there is a witness in our spirit that God is doing something here. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a confirmation as we go along. This is going to go much farther than we see with the natural eye. Mm -hmm what God is doing. It's a, it's a confirmation mm -hmm. of something he's doing. And my wife and I came into agreement under the law of agreement. How can two walk together except they be agreed? That Sergio and Tim and the two of us, that God brought us together for a higher purpose. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. That's so good. Wow, you know, he uh, unpacked so much there. Um, I want to tell you this, though, our viewing audience, uh, as he's talking about Joseph, I actually relate to Joseph a lot in, in my life and, and as part of my testimony as how I used to be very shy, and yes. I know somebody here relates to that. I uh, could not even look at a person in the no. eye, especially if it was a lady, a pretty girl. I could not even stare or look because it was just like me looking down to the floor and looking at my shoes. That's how <laughs> shy I was and, and just how God has um, set me free from uh, fear of man, um, fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. and, and I just see me today and going, wow, God has really equipped us equips everyone to succeed. I love how you share about Joseph because Joseph had everything within, uh, within him that um, would set him up for success. And I believe that's the heart of the Father, Father God, for everyone in our viewing audience to, that he has equipped you, he has given you uh, everything that you need, every talent, every gift that you have, that you need to assess yourself and, and see and kind of take an inventory of, oh, what am I good at? What am I passionate at? And also uh, pay attention to some of the ways that, because of what we're actually talking about today, he's getting me excited because he was preaching and now I'm feeling like I'm <laughs> preaching. No, we'll get, we're going to stop me here in a second. But basically just uh, we're talking about how God, or how do we hear God's voice? Yes. That's so, so, uh, so tune in to that because God is speaking in so many ways. He's mm -hmm. speaking through us. He's speaking through um, weather patterns. Yeah. He, he's giving us all kinds of notices and warnings. And we just have to pay attention and, and obey what those um, warnings and, and uh, notices are. So, wow, so good, so good. So I know Brother Tim has uh, some insight into this on how to hear God's voice. So. Let's hear what you have for yeah, us. Yeah, let's, let's go right into it. Um, of course, the Bible in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3 says, um, verse 16, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if that is true, which it is, then we need to know the Bible. We need to know the yes, Word of God. Yes, yes. And here's, here's an article that I believe really helps to, to start the foundation in someone's life of, of hearing the voice of God, okay? Um, this article was written by Daniel Darlene. Four ways God speaks to us, it's from CBN. And, and, and one of them, they say, God speaks to us as revealed in his word, okay? So we all know that, but, but this article goes on and says, okay, uh, maybe you should take a little inventory and says, okay, how much of God's revealed word are you following right now? Are you following right now? Are you faithfully seeking him on a daily basis through Bible study and prayer? Okay? Mm -hmm. So just watch, watch this. Are you active in ministry at a Bible-believing church? Are you sharing your faith? Are you doing your best to live apart from sin? Are you faithful to your spouse? Are you seeking satisfaction in Christ instead of the world? These are just a few of the many areas where the Bible touches on in our lives where God's word is revealed to us now in simple, direct, concrete language. Right. And you and I can't escape it, okay? So 
uh, it would be really good for us to take a little inventory and say, are we active in our church? Are we reading the word on a daily basis? As we do these things, God speaks to us. Amen. Okay? Because mm -hmm. he, he wants us to know his word now as revealed here mm -hmm. so that then we can take those steps to do it. I remember when I was 17 years old, I just came out of high school. I was a Christian for about six, seven, eight months at that point in time. And I wanted to know what is God's will for my life? Mm -hmm. That's what many probably who are watching this show. Yes. What is God's will right. for in this particular situation? Well, I heard a, a preacher. I was listening to Christian television, mm -hmm. and I heard a preacher preach. He said, if you don't know God's will for your life right now, then maybe you should go to Bible school. And in Bible school for a year or two, you will find God's will. And I obeyed it. I thought that was a word of God for yes. me. Yes. So I went to Bible school for two years, and then I knew exactly what God wanted to do. God wanted me to do with my life because yes. it was His life. Yes. Okay. It was, it was all about His will. And so that was a clear word for me. I want to read one more scripture. 1 mm -hmm. Peter chapter 4 says in verse 2, As a result, He does not live the rest of His earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? We live for the will of God. First, we have to know the will of God by That's reading right. His word mm -hmm. and start asking our, ourselves questions about our walk with God. Mm -hmm. Now, I would also add in there, it would be really, really good, and this is what I found in my life, to have one or two trusted friends who, who uh, know the word of God as much or even more than you do, who you can trust to the death, that will speak into your life, have your best interests in mind, and then ask them, in a complex situation or even a simple situation, what do you think? Yes. What is God saying? They normally will listen and pray for a while and then say, this is what I think, or they might not have mm -hmm. any counsel. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, if you're seeking the Lord, mm -hmm. active in His church, and you have one or two trusted friends, you almost can't fail. It's a 99% almost mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. that somewhere along the line, you're going to find God's will for your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He's going to speak to you. Because yeah. what's it say in John chapter 10? My sheep hear my voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. They hear my voice. Mm -hmm. So first you have to change your mindset that you can hear God's voice. Yes. You can hear His voice. And it could be through the many ways. And the one way we discuss right now is through His Word. There, and another way is through dreams and visions. Right. There's many other ways. That's correct. Right, Fred? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Let's go through them. What are some other ways mm. that we can hear God's voice? Well, another way and is a witness in your spirit. Mm. Yes. I've had, I know Jean has had even more so than me. For some reason, she was led to go to a certain window in the house and look out. Mm. That's right. And saw something that she needed to see. Mm. Now, that was a witness in her spirit, and she probably had no idea why she was being led. Let's take another example. How many, all of us drive. How many of us have gone a certain way for maybe weeks and months mm -hmm. or maybe even years, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden for one particular morning, you were led to drive a different way? Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably as a result of a witness in your spirit. Okay. And God speaks so, and so often, well, sometimes people refer to it as my first mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My first mind mm -hmm. told me to do this, do that, do that. But mm -hmm. if you're a believer, that that came to you as, a as it relates to maybe di diverting, uh, departing from a way, a normal way that you do things, most times that's God speaking to your spirit. And also, a witness in your spirit can be by way of the law of agreement. Again, the scripture, how can two walk together? Mm -hmm. Except sure. they be agreed. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say something, and it just lodges in your spirit. You'll say, that's truth. It may be a path that you're about to embark upon, <laughs> and somebody comes to you, somebody uh, that you have great respect for, and they say, that, that is not the way God is revealing to me that you all go. And then you get a witness in your spirit, although you had planned to go this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had made all the preparation okay. to go this particular okay. way. But when that person made that comment, 
and your spirit witnessed to what was being shared because you knew what they were saying was from, was from the spirit of God mm -hmm. that changed your course of direction. Okay. And sometimes life can get to be so challenging and you fellas are so young you probably haven't had many years <laughs> <laughs> of challenges. He's going to get it. <laughs> sometimes life can be so challenging that you have to walk by the Spirit, not just day after day, but minute after minute. That's right. Mm -hmm. How many of us have had days you had to be led by the Spirit of God from yeah. the time that you got mm -hmm. out of the bed, walked out of the house, mm -hmm. to every destination that you had that day? Mm -hmm. When you got up that morning, mm -hmm. you didn't know how, I'm preaching now, you were going to get through the day. Mm -hmm. But when you took it a step at a time, by way of a witness to your spirit, mm. how many of you had telephone calls that you needed to make and you didn't know, Lord, what time should I call? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to get the wrong person. Because you may have gotten a rejection from that same entity over and over again, but the spirit of God said, on this day, you call. Mm. And you call at a certain time. I'm going to make certain that you get the right person. And God will take you through an entire day just by walking by way of a witness in your spirit. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, I don't know, I, well, you know, he's talking about sometimes life is hard, and I remember even yesterday I woke up and I had a text that I woke up to that I, that I read, and I was going, oh boy, this is gonna be a rough day, and then mm -hmm. I try to make some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you don't wanna know all my details, but my coffee maker broke, so I used another one, and. As soon as I put the coffee in, it just went everywhere because it just exploded. <laughs> I said, wow, this is going to be an interesting day. <laughs> and uh, that was just in the, in the beginning. And then, you know, like Brother Mosley said, you know, I just started to try to say, okay, um, God, uh, um, I, just kind of tuning into like God and his voice to, to guide me and not to say this is going to be a bad day because it, because it has a bad start. It just, you don't want to say that. You want to get in agreement with what God has to say and, and how he leads you. I do want to hear um, what it is that you said that you um, maybe uh, had this instinct, uh, and I feel like, um, well, when you saw that, you, when you looked out the window, that you saw something, you have to give us details, but I think there's something there that also God uses, um, the, the intuition. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, that was the day that I looked out and saw there was a car and this this lady there was we were having a little bit of a challenge at this particular time and there was a car that had pulled up in front of our house and i just happened to look out the window and this person was taking pictures and just you know i'm thinking what is that what is this person doing <laughs> you know and that and they went away at that point they left but it, it just struck me and then we found out what you know, we knew both of us still what it was all about. They had no business there, but you know, it was a warning. It, it was, was a warning. definitely it was a, warning. Mm -hmm. a warning, and there were just so many. Like when you say hear from God, and this was before I really knew, and that was, it hasn't been that many years ago. I was heading downtown in Cleveland. It was snow and ice on the highway and I had to get to my destination because I had something to do and it, it and exhibit something at a workshop and my car hit the ice and I went back and forth across the highway. Now this was very busy time, like six o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden all the traffic stopped. It was mm. there was a trucker. He turned his bright lights on. And uh, I, so if he hadn't appeared, I, I, I probably wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. And after I got my car straightened out, he went away. I, I don't know where he went. I'm thinking, wow, that was, a, that was really mm, unlucky, you know, but it wasn't luck. I, mm -hmm. That had to be an angel that God sent to save mm -hmm. me. Yes, yes. So many times those kinds of things have happened to me. Wow. And I didn't know what it was. That's beautiful. Goodness, yeah. so much mm -hmm. material here. And uh, thank you guys again one more time. We, uh, we uh, love having you on the show. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And we look forward to uh, tuning, you tuning in to us uh, next, next episode. Thanks so much. Bye.